Uh, we're going to stay with the electric uh, boat um, concept uh, in our next talk by uh, Mr. Devro Barker IV. Um, presentation title is Rethinking the Power of Electric Boats. Um, Skip Barker is the founder of eBoat Revolution Corporation. Uh, in, in January of this year, he founded the, this company, a spin-off from Wing Systems, where he had served as director of special projects. Before that, uh, Skip founded the Wilson Devereaux Literary Agency, which represented science books, including Astronomy for Dummies and The Man Who Would Be Queen. He also started and chaired the VIEW International Foundation, a, a charity which developed in conjunction with NASA uh, and published by the National Academy of Sciences, graphic books of embossed space imagery, enabling blind students to feel what the universe looks like. Uh, I note that Skip is also a participant in uh, Greenboat 2, and so, or 1, and uh, so we're pleased to have him uh, back here uh, for our, the talk today. Thank you all very much. Um, I'd like you to take note of that logo. Uh, Annette sent me an email yesterday afternoon saying we'd like your presentation, so I had to get that finished. And uh, in as much as it's now nap hour, any of you who'd like to sneak out, I'm not going to be upset. Uh, as like any good uh, substitute teacher, we're going to have videos. I got it. And Wing, uh, Wing Systems, uh, represented by Diana Russell here today, is the, uh, who is the founder of Wing Systems. Uh, I worked for for a bunch of years. And uh, we developed uh, that blue boat that you just saw. And we began with much simpler ideas. And um, E-Boat Revolution is a spin-off because we decided we needed to bring together not only the naval architecture and, um, and the other elements that go into this, but we needed to uh, focus on the connective tissue. And so almost as a default, the rowing market presented itself uh, as a, uh, a candidate uh, because uh, the technologies that seem to be available, and we're talking about Torquedo for KW motors and catamarans, trimarans, and so forth, they seem to fit right off the bat the requirements of these coaches. And so we set off to figure out how to make. They're very quiet motors, as you can tell. And so, uh, as we moved forward through that process of looking at all the different elements involved in small electric boats, 
we found ourselves having to deal with the obvious things. And you can see here, these are some of the obvious things. Turns out when you have a, a large propeller that turns slowly compared to a small propeller turning at a high speed like in gas motors, you run into different program uh, problems and issues. And, uh, and so that's, you know, as we, as we saw these things that we were uh, expecting to find, there were also a bunch of things that we didn't expect to find. And one of the things that became clear to me is that e-boats chip away at the wall that divides us from the reason for our being on the water. Uh, be it research or recreation or rowing, what we didn't expect was the new and instant rapport between the coach and the coxswain. For the first time, it was two-way communications, no bullhorn. And this leads me uh, to a story um, which really brought me home to the research and the environmental aspect of what, our, what we were hoping to accomplish. This is the central coast of Florida, uh, Cocoa Beach and so forth, and I had the great privilege of testing that white boat you just saw somewhere along uh, the intercoastal waterway um, on that, where I, A1A comes across, the, the road that comes across the top there, there's a, uh, there's a small barge canal. I think it uh, parallels Sea Ray Boulevard or something like that. And after my day of testing was done, and we were looking at that cavitation, those ventilation issues, and I had spent a terrific day, sunny, I thought I had accomplished what I set out to do. Little did I know that the real epiphany was coming. As the day finished and I, I had a little battery power left, and I decided, okay, you've earned it. I'm going to take a little cruise down the, the barge canal. And, uh, and so I did. And I was cruising at maybe eight knots. I was a, just cruising along. It didn't occur to me that nobody could hear me until... I thought, you know, as this is a celebration, I would perhaps have a beer. And so when I opened the beer, I startled a, a bird that was a beam of me, not a hundred yards ahead of me, a beam of me. Now, I was startled too by the bird, but this is what came, it became clear at that instant. The most important thing we now know to be true. Beer is louder than the e-boat. <laughs> I would like to point out, Captain Quinn is drinking a Narragansett beer. <laughs> On to more videos. Lesson learned, e-boats are great for drone deployment. So here you see probably the most common electric boat out there. You know, that's a Duffy. That's well, not a Duffy drawing, but this is where we are most commonly finding e-boats. This is the most uncommon e-boat. 
This is what we're going to be producing. It's coming out soon. And then we have the future, and I'm going to let Torquedo give us this video. Deep Blue Hybrid integrates propulsion and energy management into one complete system for more convenience, increased independence, and greater harmony with nature. Enjoy clean, quiet, and powerful electric propulsion and capture clean energy to power everything on board. Silent power, generated from the wind and sun, gives you the ultimate freedom to explore the world while enjoying pioneering mobility. Let's take a look inside. Deep Blue Hybrid System Management Console Displays. The main menu. A propulsion screen. An overview of all components. Touch a component for details. An overview of the energy flow. And an option to choose settings. Energy Management 2.0 starts with clean power, supplied from multiple sources. Photovoltaic modules capture solar energy. Spinning props charge batteries while sailing. Standard shore power connection and, when necessary, efficient diesel generators provide backup power. Power consumption. The cap... All right, the, the rest of it looks all the same. It's really rather dry. This is what's important, though. They, they were talking about the big components, the solar panels, the motors, the batteries, the super efficient DC generators and so forth. Okay, we can't all go sailing away to Phuket on our million dollar luxury catamaran, but the thought process still yields benefits for us here now. And, um, and what I want to point out to you here is while many people are working on the big components, it's the little lines, the, the blue, the, I'm sorry, there are no blue, green, red, yellow lines that are connecting the elements. This is where we have the opportunity to rethink the power of electric boating. It's operations. We've talked a lot today about the human element. And it is, I, I would like to offer, I would like to request that somebody come up with a new acronym, because I haven't been able to come up with it. Instead of KISS, we need an acronym that is make it easy, stupid. Anybody come up with that, please? I'd love to know. Because as we've heard, people, consumers, and I'm speaking specifically about my customers now, they will, if given the opportunity, they will buy green. But you've got to make it easy. It's got to be turnkey. That's it. So we can think about operations, capabilities, equipment, all the different ways in which electric boating and regular petro boating work. But at the end of the day, it's the human element. It's making things turnkey, simple. In our boat, our little trimaran, you plug it in, it powers itself up, you unplug it, you go. There is no 12 volt system on it. We don't need it because rowing coaches typically don't need running lights or anything else. Here's the thing though, the Navy has led the way on electric boating and we didn't even realize it was gonna happen. It turns out that these now, thankfully, are human-powered shells that the midshipmen this past fall, the ladies' crew, took the initiative to test an electric boat. And I think we all need to think about how human-powered shells can achieve ballistic uh, uh, I don't even know what to call that. They put their shell through my boat. 
And so, yes, we had a pre-test configuration, and then, well, we can see our damage assessment afterwards. And, but what we need to learn here is that they took the initiative to test something, and our e-boats work, and we all need to take a, a page from that. We need to test and find the connective tissue, and I know I'm preaching to the converted, so it's sort of like Henry David Thoreau. We need to go to the waters to live deliberately. We need, we need to do both those things. We need to live on the water, and we need to be deliberate about it. I know you all feel the same way. I just think that it's the connective tissue, the bits and pieces that is going to allow us to move forward in sustainable ways because it's keeping it easy, stupid. Thank you very much.